أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعض فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Two days ago, three days ago, there was a program. I think most people are aware of the program. Came on TV, Channel 4. What do the British Muslims think? How do we think? A lot of things I want to say about this particular issue, points, comments that I want to make, but there are three very important points that I want to bring to your attention before even dealing with what Channel 4 has done in the past and what they continue to do, and what we expect and suspect them to continue to do in the future, and Allah knows best. The three points, Ikhwani, before we deal with some of the many questions that have been left unanswered, because the program left more questions than it gave answers, although they tried to give answers to the general public, but it wasn't fair and it wasn't accurate, nonetheless. Three things I want to mention to you and our community, our members in this community. When it comes to those programs that come on TV where they try to demonize Al-Islam and the Muslims, where they try to marginalize us and make us appear as if we're people who want to live isolated, things that the normal average person, when you talk to them, his understanding of the religion and his desires are not reflective of the results that they found for the most part on the program. That's one of the issues that I have with the program. Whenever you find these surveys, everyone knows that surveys are subjective. They're not objective. Anyone who conducts a survey, whatever result he wants to get from the survey, he can get that result. So if they chose to survey 1,000 Muslims, my question is, who were those 1,000 Muslims? Were they 1,000 Muslims who were practicing the religion? Were they 1,000 Muslims who have Pakistani ethnicity and background, or were they Africans? Was it 1,000 Muslims who migrated to this country, or they were raised in this country? Because as I mentioned, every single survey is subjective. So what happens is, people, especially in politics, People who are on the other side of the results of the survey, most of this time they're not really worried about what the survey says because the survey is generally given to get answers that the one who conducted the survey is trying to do. And then the end result was a bit ridiculous, and we'll come to that, inshallah, as we shall. Three issues I want to bring to your attention concerning these programs. Before we watch them and we, we anticipate that they're coming, Muslims jump up and down because we expect the worst. And history tells us that uh, that position, that particular sentiment is not necessarily flawed because they always want to show us in a bad way. The Sharia, all the Sharia is when it comes on TV, when it's portrayed on TV, 
It's about killing people. And that's part of our Sharia. And we're not going to apologize about that. And we're going to tell our youngsters, if you ask any Muslim, what's your position concerning homosexuality? You should say what the truth is from the Quran and the Sunnah. You have that right to believe in that. You have that right. If they came and they surveyed 1,000 Muslims, and they said to those 1,000 Muslims, do you think Al-Islam is the best religion? Do you believe Islam is better than Christianity and Judaism as a religion? 1,000 Muslims should say, yes, I believe that. That's the result of the survey. I believe that. But now to take that answer from 1,000 Muslims and then to make it mean, so therefore we want to kill all of the Christians and all of the people who follow Judaism, then this is the problem. And that's what that program sought to do. That's what it did. It was very subjective, and the end result of what they found, it was a bit problematic, inshallah, we'll come to that. First thing that I want to advise you people with is a reoccurring theme from this member, reoccurring theme, and that is, Al-Islam has made it haram for us as Muslims to be people who suffer from inferiority complexes. You can't be a person who feels that you're inferior to anybody other than those people that Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah or his messenger, they made them superior. And if you're not reaching that level, then you can look at that person and you feel some level of inferiority. But even then you say, I think he's better. He appears to be better, but Allah knows best. Inferiority complex is a problem. Any war that you have to wage, any battle that you're trying to win, if you are inferior and you feel that way about the one who you're against, you lost the battle already. And that lesson comes clear throughout the Quran. Not acceptable for a put Muslim to sit next to someone and to say, he's an Arab, he's better than me. He's a man and I'm a woman, therefore he's better than me. This one is older, therefore they're better than me, just naturally superior to me. He's employed and I'm not employed, he's better than me. He has a degree. I don't have a degree. He's better than me. He has this. He, this is not our religion. His car is bigger than my car. I pull up into the parking lot. Someone pulls up next to me. He has an expensive car. When I look at him and he comes out looking a particular way, the Muslim is not allowed to say, look at his car. He's better than me. If someone exists like that, he's not reading the Quran. He's not reading the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who eradicated this false principle. Many ayat. Like the story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. David being smaller, much smaller, and his army much smaller. Goliath being a giant, and his army being much larger than the army of David. Dawood, alayhi salatu was salam. And David killed Goliath. And that story is in all of the books of the three major religions. Come, fi'atan qalilatan that's one of the most important lessons from that story. How many times did a small band of people, a small group of people, how many times did they vanquish and they had victory over a large number of people? That's telling this Muslim community, hey, we may be lesser in numbers, we may be less in resources, we may not necessarily be the people who are pushing the buttons, the movers and the shakers in society, Nonetheless, nonetheless, no one is better than us other than those people that Allah Azawajal, he made them better than us based upon religious issues. And this is always going to be an issue that the people who have power are going to always try to put the regular man, pit him against other people. And in reality, although we may be a minority in this country, nonetheless, we have a lot in common with the other minority groups. We have more in common than we have that is not in common. But the powers to be, the media, politicians, people like that, they always want to isolate you and make you think, make you think, make us think we're lesser than what our reality is. And that's something that Islamically is not permissible. When those prophets and messengers came to their people, a proof that people who are in power always use this ploy. Always, the first Rasul, Allah mentioned in the Quran, ma yuqalu laka illa ma qad qila lil rusul min qablik. The people don't say to you, Muhammad, 
anything other than what the previous messengers and prophets, what was said to them. And one of the things that was said to them, every time they came to their people, the people who were in power said to them, you are being followed by the people with less than superiority. You should suffer from inferiority complexes. All of the prophets heard that, and none of them apologized for the hop that they were with, that came with them. And there are many examples of that. We don't really want to go into that, but I will share with you the statement that happened with Nuh, alayhi salatu salam, the very first Rasul sent to mankind. When he came to his people, he started giving them a dawah ilallah. Those people said to him, Ma naraka illa taba'aka, ma naraka taba'aka illa ladhina hum aradhiluna badi ar-ra'i wa ma nara lakum alayna min fadl. We don't see anybody following you, Nuh, except the people who are fewer in number, the people who are lesser, and they call them bad dear right, the uneducated, stupid people. And we don't see that you're better than us. We're more superior than you. When Nuh heard that and the other prophets, they didn't apologize. They said, and what is it, my fault that these are the people who chose to follow me? And you didn't follow me? They're going to get their reward from Allah. You're going to get your reward from Allah. So this issue of being inferior is a problem for the Muslim. Don't be inferior as it relates to Muslims, as it relates to non-Muslims, as it relates to these political issues. We don't have to apologize about our religion. The religion says what it says. You ask me, what's my opinion? I'll give you the opinion. Halal, haram, I agree, I disagree. But after that, what are you trying to get to? I believe Islam is the best religion. I believe Islam is the only religion that Allah is going to accept. Anyone who's not a Muslim and he doesn't die on la ilaha illallah. And the dawah came to him. I believe he's going to go to the hellfire. He's never going to come out of that hellfire. No matter what he does, no matter what he says of good. He'll get his reward in the dunya. But yawm al qiyamah, he's not going to go to the jannah. Now, what's the next issue? Is it permissible for me to discriminate against that person? Is it permissible for me to harm that person? And this is what they do with those surveys. The Muslim says, hey, I believe Islam is the best. Because 50, 60, 70 percent of the Muslims believe that, the end result in their mind is we're extreme. We're radical. We want to be people who are isolated from the outer community. And this is not the reality of the case. So if we begin to buy into being people who are apologetic and people who feel that we are inferior, inferior is a problem. And that's why, Ikhwani, why I'm bringing this to your attention, we don't want representatives of Muslims from our community going on programs and they misconstrue what our religion is saying. The woman comes on the religion, on the program, and yes, the Muslim woman has to have a wali when it comes to getting married. And that's honor for her and protection for her. Now, it's not permissible for the person to come and to misconstrue what is the wali all about. Is the wali in al-Islam an institution that says it's impermissible for the Muslim lady to go to the bull ring in order to make a purchase and to come back except that she has to go with a wali? The fact that she has to have a wali when she gets married, does that mean it's impermissible in Islam for the woman to drive in the UK? So when the lady doesn't know her religion and the person is being interviewed, as we saw again, once again, Quilliam Foundation, when that program came out, they were some of the biggest supporters of the LBGT people, trying to show the outer community that homosexuality is in El Islam and the scholars before they allowed this and they discussed this and they allow people to have different sexual orientations. That's not the case. Don't be an individual who feels that you are in, in inferior to anybody. It's not permissible in our religion. Who's the superior one in our religion? The best of you on the side of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. So I see an individual, he appears to have that taqwa, she appears to have that taqwa. I say, maybe, it appears, that person may be better than me. Allah knows best. The best of you is the one who learns the Quran and he teaches it. So this is the half of the Quran, he teaches the Quran. I think, I think, because I don't know much of the Quran, I think that sheikh, he may be better than me. But Allah still knows best. I'm still not going to put my face on the ground for the hafiz of the Quran. I'm still not going to allow anybody just to disrespect me. But inferiority and superiority is established not by your color, not by your wealth. It's established by what the religion said. Khairukum 
anfa'akum lin nas. The best of the people, the most superior of the people, is the one who brings the most benefit to the people. This individual over here, his masjid, his institution, they've helped all of those aytam. They helped all of those masakin. They helped all of those muhtajin over there in Syria. People were in Turkey. We say, well, I think maybe that individual, he may be better than me. And still I say, Allah knows best. Number two, ikhwani, and this is really important. When we look at these programs, we have to do away with the conspiracy theory attitude and minhaj. There are some people who actually exist and everything is a conspiracy theory. They don't believe anything. There is this thing in the public arena that is partly true. And that is the statement and the feeling people have, they're lying to us. The media is lying to us. The politicians are lying to us. The educators who educate us, they're lying to us. And that's partly true. But existing like that can only get you so far. In the religion of Al-Islam, we have a methodology to determine what we believe and what we don't believe. We just don't reject things because it came from non-Muslims. The information came from a Jewish individual. This information came from a woman. This information came to me from someone who's lesser than me in terms of knowledge. He's from another madhab. It's not our religion. The truth is determined based upon a minhaj, descriptions. It has certain characteristics that are connected to it. As for the one who says everything is conspiracy, you only can get so far in life with that type of existence. We say there are a lot of conspiracies back then and right now, and they'll continue to be conspiracies. And to reject that is a problem. person is living in a bubble if he doesn't believe that there are conspiracies. That issue of weapons of mass destruction is a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy because Abu Sama said it's conspiracy. Fulan said it's conspiracy. And Alan said it. It's because when the people who made the claim were pressed up upon, pushed up upon, they were never able to prove it to this very day. So it was a conspiracy for individuals to go into an Iraq to wreak havoc on that country. So there are conspiracies. Allah mentioned in many ayat of the Quran, not one, not two, tens of ayat in the Quran that the non-Muslims, they have conspiracies against al-Islam. So the person can't come and make takdeeb of the Quran or make takdeeb of the authentic sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Innahum yakiduna kaydan wa akidu kayda. Verily, they have a plan and they plot. And I Allah, I'm also planning, I'm also plotting. Yamkuruna wa yamkurullah. Wallahu khairul makirin. They plan and they plot. And they have their plans and they have their plots that they want to hatch. Allah also, he plans and he plots. And he's the best of those who plan and he's plotting. All of those ayat, many, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتي أجرا عظيما. Verily, when you look at their private meetings, their secret meetings at night time when they're by themselves. When you listen to them, verily much of what they say has no good in it at all. Has no good in it whatsoever. Those are the plans and the plots that the people used to make against the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. But for the Muslim today, some of the things that we hear, they are erroneous and they're idiotic and they're extremely juvenile and it doesn't help us in our attempt to move forward to be people who are going to be mature as it relates to dealing with the challenges that we have. This man, who was the leader of Daesh, Abu Bakr Ibrahim al-Baghdadi, may Allah guide that person and guide us as well. Some of the Muslims say this is not even a real individual. He's fictitious. It's just a figment of the imagination of the people. He's really a Jewish man, and his name is Elliot Simon. He's an actor in Israel. Who believes things like that? People know that man. People from the Muslim community know that man. It's not acceptable for us to say and to believe crazy things like that because we'll never take responsibility in meeting the challenges that are in front of us if we're living in cuckoo land, la-la land. A few years ago, 
five years ago, there was a big, massive, big, massive flood in Pakistan. Over 2,000 people were drowned. And tens of thousands of other people, they lost their property and so forth and so on. The conspiracy theorists, everything that happens in the dunya, it is because America did it. America has some secret military technology and equipment. They caused the flood. As opposed to the Muslims saying, this is a natural disaster that Allah Ta'ala decreed on the people. It's clear that this is the situation. So when we have natural disasters, we're supposed to do certain things in this religion in relationship to that. As opposed to a person doing nothing other than being wrapped up into conspiracy theories. So when those programs come on, I and you, we can't allow ourselves to sit there and automatically we're going to say it's conspiracy. It may be. We don't know if it's a conspiracy until we see and we hear the information. What is correct, even if it incriminates us, we have to accept it. We have to embrace it so that we can change our situation. What's not correct, we distance ourselves from it. We throw it back at the people and we say, we don't agree with you. Not because, not because we just don't want to agree, but because this is not true based upon A, B, C, D, and so forth and so on. So some of the idiotic things that we hear from our community, they just will keep us politically immature and unable to deal with the challenges that we have. Number three and finally, the issue of calling a spade a spade. As Muslims, we've been commanded. Just say the truth. Whether the truth is against you, whether it's for you. I mentioned a number of times. There is no perfect masjid on the face of the earth. Every single masjid in this dunya, they have good and they have bad. We hope to be a part of a masjid, wherever we find ourselves, where the masjid has more khair than it has evil. But we can't be the people who don't take on ourselves what the truth is. The Prophet wasn't like that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to tell his companions, fika anta imri'un fika jahiliya. You, you, you an ignorant person. You have the ways of the people of ignorance. And he just said it how it was. The Jewish lady would say something about what the Muslims said and did. Aisha would hear that. She would bring it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, yes, yes, that Jewish lady, she said, what is the truth? What Shaitan said, it was true that Ayatul Kursi is the greatest ayat of the Quran. And when people do that, when people do that, even if the criticism is against themselves, they change what the problem is. As for not being able to call a spade a spade, whether it's against you or whether it's against someone else, when you don't have that ability, then what happens is, again, you live in some kind of cocoon and will exist in some kind of cocoon and we don't take care of the necessary things that are on the table in terms of moving our individual selves forward, our families forward, or our community forward. Those are the three things. Not to be an individual who is inferior. Looking at people as if they're better than you and we're always on the defensive, on the back foot, apologizing, trying to accommodate. Number two, don't be one of those people who exist. And in the existence, in that individual's existence, he's an individual who he just can't call it how it is. He doesn't see it. He doesn't call and he's not honest about what he actually believes the reality of the case is. And lastly, the conspiracy theory issue. As it relates to the program, Ikhwani, some of the things that I heard when they surveyed some of the Muslims and a large majority of Muslims said they don't believe that there should be same-sex marriage, things like that, we become happy because that's our religion. And we're just stating our religion. If it is true that a large portion of our younger people, they said, no, no, we're inclined to believe that this is something that is permissible and we should have safe sex marriage, then that's an issue of concern. Because it's what we always say here. And that is the challenges of our youth growing up in this environment. How do they stay balanced on their religion, holding on to their religion, but at the same time, at the same time, knowing how to deal with these contemporary issues that are being presented to them. So we have a massive responsibility as it relates to addressing their issues. 
If you were to ask the average Muslim, do you have money to pay for private schooling to send your kid to the Islamic school? He says, no, but if I did, I would do that. 95% of the people would do that. Some of the people may not do that. They may say, no, well, I feel that the Muslim school, although there are some positives that come out of it in terms of the environment, maybe it's not on par academically with a public school. So for that reason, he has the right to say, I don't want to send my kid to the Muslim school. For an example, you're going to have people who have different opinions. But why is it that if a Muslim says 80% of them, 60% of them, I want to send my kids to a Muslim school. And on my street, I want to be surrounded by all Muslims. That, if given the opportunity, I want to be on the street with all Muslims. Why does that answer equal extremism? Why does that answer equal, I'm an individual who's radical? Why does that equal, I want to harm people? I'm a terrorist. Doesn't mean that. I want to be around people who have like mind. They're similar to me. Their religion is like mine. If you were to ask the rich people about the taxes in this country, what do you think about the taxes? The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the answer of rich people is going to be different from the answer of the, of the poor people. If you ask Afro-Caribbean people, you ask them the question, what is your position and your opinion in this country about the police? Do you trust the police or you don't trust the police? Based upon their history, based upon our history, based upon our reality, we may say something, and when you give that same question to the outer community here in the UK, our position may be different from the position of the vast majority of this country. What does that mean? That the Afro-Caribbean community, they want to be isolated. Does it mean that they want to hurt people? They want to harm people? So those differences, they're just natural. They don't mean anything. But in those types of programs, they just want to bring it out to continue to demonize our religion, make Muslims appear as if we are a group of people who the outer community and society have something to be afraid of, and that is not the case. That is not the case. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسأل الله تعالى السداد والتوفيق. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. The Sharia of Al Islam that's always being demonized. And every time we see it in the media, the Sharia is cutting people's heads off and cutting their hands off and issues like that. Capital punishment, corporal punishment. And again, that's from our religion. We're not going to run away from that. You're going to call a spade a spade. That's just how it is. But the Sharia of Al Islam as well is the Sharia of Al Islam is this elder right there sitting by that pole come into this masjid every Friday right there sitting by that pole after Allah has tried him with some medical issues one of the younger brothers from this community every Friday they go and pick up that man they bring him to the masjid for Juma and they get him back home every single Friday that's the Sharia in our religion that's the Sharia why don't we ever hear issues like that and that Charlie Hebdo fiasco there in France the Sharia of Al-Islam, the Sharia, that these people only see it as being demonic. The Sharia of Al-Islam was that African Muslim guy who was there who took those Jewish people and brought them downstairs and hid them. And by Allah's permission, they were not hurt, they were not harmed. That's the Sharia of Al-Islam. Why don't we hear those people making mention of that? Because it doesn't serve their purpose. Just as the survey and the result of those surveys, they serve a purpose for them. And that purpose is to make the other people afraid of us. When in fact, all of these minority groups, we have more in common with them than we have out of common with them. The Sharia of Islam is that Palestinian woman in front of unsurmountable odds in Palestine. Children hardly even go to school in Palestine due to the lack of stability. That lady, you got to see her story. She was just acknowledged by some of the Muslim world as being the teacher of the year. That can be argued because there are other teachers who do a lot. Nonetheless, she won a lot of money as a reward. She was given a lot of money as a reward. That's the Sharia of Islam, all of that jihad and effort that that lady is making in order to ensure that the children in her local village are learning how to read and how to write. We'll never expect to see those things being flashed out in the public eye. 
and I can't really necessarily blame them for that because that's our responsibility. And this is why I'm saying, don't be a conspiracy theorist because you'll never change anything. Don't be a person who's apologetic. You'll never change anything. Never always allow ourselves to be on the back foot and defensive as it relates to what these people are saying to make the minds up of the people. Now, the outer public, they don't have the Quran and the Sunnah. As a result of that, they don't know that skepticism, to be a skeptic when people come and bring you information, you don't accept it just because he told me. Just because you told me I'm going to believe it. It's not our religion. Skepticism is a sign of a healthy and an independent mindset to be able to say, why are you saying that? Who said that along with you? Who believed it? Who did it? I'm not going to say accept it. In Al-Islam, we have that. We have skepticism in our religion where we hear, we listen, we weigh, we watch. People in the other community, they're easily influenced. They just follow what people are saying to them. It's not okay for us to be like that. It's not okay because we have a religion that has given us light and given us information. So we're not going to apologize for being Muslims. And I say here openly in public, stick to the Quran and stick to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Stay on top of yourselves and your children as it relates to these issues where we take the middle and the balance course without wavering to the right or the left. What Allah said, that's the truth. You call me narrow-minded, you call me tunnel vision, I'm going to be proud when you tell me that. Because I know I have to be narrow-minded in certain aspects of this religion. I'm not afforded the opportunity to be liberal and to say and to believe any and everything. And a person, when he starts to think that that's okay, it's a problem. Being liberal and what Allah allows you to be liberal in, there's no problem. There's no problem. Got to be easy. I know how to deal with people. But we can't be people who want to change the complexion of the religion. We ask Allah Ta'ala for his divine protection to give us some leadership that has some wisdom, give us some leadership that has some courage, give us some leadership that has a future. Make us followers of that leadership who are people who are malleable and people who are workable and people who are cooperative with our leadership. We ask Allah to put this ummah on the hand of the one hand of one man, the heart of one man, so that we can deal with some of these issues and to do away with all this fragmentation and all of these things that do nothing but allow us to remain in this position that is problematic. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-falah Qad qamati salatu, qad qamati salah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah استوى تدل التراث ولا تختلف فتختلف قلوبكم وسد الخلل إن تصويت الصف من إقام الصلاة لا تصون صفوفكم أو يخالف الله بين قلوبكم من وصل صفا وصله الله ومن قطع صفا قطعه الله لينوا بين أيدي إخوانكم لا تسبقوني في السجود ولا في الركوع strain out the lines feet to feet to feet shoulder to shoulder Shoulder to shoulder. Barakallah fikum. Stow a tadiru. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المطوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى 
والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي السهف الأولى سهف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سبحان رب العظيم وبحمده سبحان رب العظيم وبحمده سبحان رب العظيم وبحمده سبحان قدوس رب الملائكة سمي الله من حميدة طيب Allah Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ورد ضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشية عاملة ناصبة تسلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من دريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمالق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمي الله لي من حمد بل لك حمد كثيرا طيب شد شد الله الله أكبر 
الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله هم صلي على محمد وعلى اللهم بارك على اللهم إنا أكرك شكرك خصب إبادتك اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي فمن كثير ولا يغفر فاغفر لي مغفرة من كورك اللهم إني ترجع من الآب القبر فئنا من يغفر ومن شر فئنا بسيدة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just a few announcements. Firstly, please donate generously on your way out. This masjid relies on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your financial support so that we can keep providing the activities for the community. Tonight, we have a very important seminar discussing a topic that affects all of us on a daily basis. The seminar is titled The Fiqh of Social Media and the Mobile Phone and will be delivered by Sheikh Abu Osama. Please try your best to attend and also bring your children as they will benefit a great deal. The seminar will take place from 7 p.m. until Isha. The Saturday lecture after Maghrib is entitled The Major Sins Disrespecting Parents and will be delivered by Ustad Akil Mahmoud. The final journey, Ghusl and Shroud workshop for sisters will take place this Saturday. Registrations are now closed as the workshop is fully booked. Task Force GLM is continuing the bread project for the benefit of our brothers and sisters in Syria. Your help is required. We would appreciate any volunteers or donations towards this project. Our donation page is www.justgiving.com forward slash bake bread. We'll be releasing all the information that was gathered from the visit inshallah. Morrison's will be providing free health testing and advice for people of all ages. Please attend on the 29th and the 30th of April. We have received requests for du'as for brothers and sisters who are currently going through difficulties. Please remember them in your du'as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may alleviate from them any hardships. Once again, please donate generously on your way out. Jazakumullah khair.